Pumpkin Grove has some very interesting structures. Probably the most famous structure, at least in my opinion, is the Barnacle. Ralph Monroe was this very talented person who came from New England to the wilds of South Florida in the late 1870s and eventually adopted Coconut Grove as his home, bought a lot of property, and built this wonderful one-story wood frame building on the ridge overlooking the bay. He got married for a second time. He was a widower, got married for a second time uh, in the early 1900s and he and his new wife decided to have a family and so what he did was he he jacked up as it were the one-story home uh, and he built a new first floor under the original first floor so now you have two floors. He had a boathouse and still does right on the edge of the water that's where he designed his shallow draft sailboats. That was his original home was right there. Uh, what you see today is actually a replacement but it's almost identical of the original which was destroyed by the hurricane of 26. And when he built the replacement right after the Hurricane of 26, he built it in such a way that the sides give to wind so it's not going to just crunch. And it's taken a lot of hits like Hurricane Andrew, and it stood through all that. And it's a state park, and I would really recommend this to people as a place to visit. Uh, the state runs it, they've got rangers that take you around on a tour. It's a beautiful place. It's really amazing to have a historic site like this in downtown Coconut Grove, in the heart of the Grove, where people walk by it every day, and it really preserves the history of Coconut Grove. This house right here, built right on the shore of Biscayne Bay, has been preserved almost like it was when the original owner lived here. The uh, story of Commodore Ralph Middleton Monroe is really fascinating in how he got down here to South Florida. You have to think of it at a time where this wasn't a city, no one lived down here, and this was really the Everglades and wilderness. Ralph Monroe met a man by the name of William Brickle up in New York who told him about this fabulous native wildlife area, and Ralph Middleton Monroe, being a love of sailing ships and of sailing, decided he wanted to visit the area. Uh, one of his first visits came aboard one of William Brickle's sailing ships. They sailed down from New York to Key West. When he got here, of course, there was nothing here. There was no structures of any kind right on the water, and so it was just a native wildlife uh, habitat. After that, um, Mr. Monroe was married to Ava Hewitt Monroe, and unfortunately, she became ill with tuberculosis. And in those days, one of the cures, or what the doctors prescribed, was a changing climate. So they decided to come to South Florida. Unfortunately, Ava Hewitt was too ill and during that winter passed away here in South Florida where she is buried near the Coconut Grove Library. After Ava Hewitt passed away, he returned to New York to be with his two-year-old daughter and when he returned to New York found out that she had well has passed away from an illness during the winter. So at that time, Mr. Monroe basically lost his wife and child during that winter and had been looking for something to change his lifestyle. Uh, it was basically a new start for him. He did spend a few years in New York and then decided to come back down to South Florida and start a business down here. Uh, when Ralph Monroe first got here, of course, he had to build his own house and with the help of a few friends, built the boathouse, which is right now on Biscayne Bay. And that boathouse served as his home and as his work area and his job was to basically build boats and also to do repairs on boats that were coming from New York down to Key West. The boathouse that stands today on Biscayne Bay shore isn't the original structure. The original was actually blown away by the 1926 hurricane. Ralph Monroe saw that happen from the second floor of the barnacle and he made a couple changes to the, bar to the boathouse in order to make it more structurally sound for the next hurricane he knew would happen. He raised the structure exactly to plan from the original structure built in 1885 with a couple of changes. One was he put ties down to the ground to keep it from swaying back and forth in the high winds of a hurricane. And also he built two breakaway walls on the first floor. Knowing the tide surge is gonna come through and that you can't stop mother nature, he built two walls to basically come down with that water and basically have the water come through the house and back out without the rest of the structure sustaining any damage. When visitors come here uh, along the tour, one of the things they encounter is the Marine Railway, which we still use today to bring his replica egret out of the water twice a year. 
that Marine Railway was designed so that when he built the boat here at the Barnacle, he can launch it into the water. Knowing how shallow the bay is, he needed a way to get the boat out to deeper water. So he constructed the Marine Railway, which goes out about a thousand feet out into the bay into deeper water. The Barnacle is the oldest house in Dade County on its original foundation. The first part of the house was built in 1891. And the reason he named it the Barnacle is because if you've ever had to scrape a barnacle off the bottom of a boat, and you know how hard they stick to it, he wanted it to be resembling of that, something that this house was gonna be here forever. So when he built it, he built a strong foundation, and this house has been here through two major hurricanes. First, a hurricane in 1926. The house did suffer some water damage, but only roof tiles needed to be replaced. The same happened with Andrew. Andrew was a devastating hurricane to the area, and a, luckily the barnacle withstood the winds and rain damage, and only a few roof tiles and minor repairs were needed. So we try to take the visitor back in time and, and show him what it was like when he lived here and how peaceful and quiet it was, and to imagine having no neighbors on either side. Ralph Monroe really believed in a simple and genuine life, living one with nature and just enjoying things the way they were. So let's go inside and see if any Monroes are around. <laughs> now as you look around the living room here, you'll notice this is not a fancy house like Vizcaya, the Italian Renaissance villa that James Deering uh, built in the 20s. This is a very simple house, but it's a very solidly built house because it was built by a boat builder. The construction is called post and beam. You'll see these big, heavy beams that go through the house. That pr protects the house from hurricane winds. And since he had spent summers with his grandfather in Massachusetts learning the, the uh, cabinet making trade, the house is full of built-ins, built-in cabinets. And you notice the picture hangers up here. He didn't believe in holes in the plaster. Plaster was expensive. And maybe that dated back to his uh, Scotch ancestry. Now, some of the furniture here is, is, uh, was left by the Monroe, these Cogswell chairs here. Probably the oldest furniture in the house are these two pieces of uh, furniture here, these two chairs. They were gifts from James Deering of Vizcaya. They're from the Italian Renaissance period. Ralph used to go to stag parties at Vizcaya. Here we are in the dining room. The family left four of the Chippendale chairs that went with the seven-leaf dining room table that originally was here. The family did a lot of entertaining. They were from New England, and so they had a lot of company all winter long. Ralph Monroe was a very social person. He welcomed people. He loved showing them how the wonders of the, the grove and the bay. He loved taking them sailing down the bay in his cruising yachts. And uh, unfortunately, that w was one of the things that uh, kind of tripped him up because he didn't want people to really move here and overpopulate his, his little paradise he'd found. But he wanted people to come and see it. And so in his later years, when Henry Flagler brought the railroad here and uh, opened it up to all the other tourists, uh, he was a little dismayed at the, uh, the growth of Miami. And I don't know what he'd think about now. Now let's go on upstairs and take a look at the oldest part of the house. Now the house looked somewhat different when it was a one-story house because the living room was over in this area where the bedrooms are, the master bedroom is. And this was part of the living room. Ralph and Jesse had separate bedrooms over on this side of the house. And Worth's room, his son, was over in that area. You'll notice some ropes here on either side, and they're tied off on cleats like you'd find on a boat. The ropes uh, lead to pulleys, and they open and close the transom windows up at the top there. 
This attic here was always open, and the Monroes stored a lot of their old furniture and their old steamer trunks, and they even, we even found a, a box of glass negatives from photographs that Ralph had taken dating back to 1877. So he captured the way Coconut Grove looked and will never look again. I hope you enjoyed this small tour of the Barnacle, and I hope this inspires you to come out and see for yourself this interesting house and learn about the man who built it.